way how you present what nature has given you. And in this sense, you are a composer and uh, you will probably play us some charts. I don't know exactly what you're going to do now, but another aspect is room and ability with audio to locate things in the room together with the visual, with the vision. And uh, I think this is the core of your work. And uh, I would think I would pass the word to you and I'm really excited what's, what we are going to see now. So please. Okay. Tim, go ahead. Well, uh, thanks so much, Christopher, for, for, for the introduction. Um, it's a very big pleasure. Um, you really see here now us working. The Heavens Carousel is turning now for about three hours. We got it working step by step. Um, it's a new round of the Heavens Carousel with called Harmonies. And well, it's um, a pleasure to have you all around here um, well, virtually, but also as you see physically, and I can um, welcome Marit, who was part of um, uh, the Ice Cube team, and of course, Volker Osenkov Okada, um, who um, is, well, the scientific counterpart um, of um, the called harmonies, and he will mention a few words later on what's about um, um, called um, um, harmonies. And uh, well, and of course, um, I welcome um, well all the, the Ice Cube friends joining later on also in, in a kind of interactive session um, um, online. And, and it's a great pleasure to meet you at least at these times. Um, 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 uh, uh, virtually. So the idea um, when neutrinos make you cry, so this, this is the title um, of, of, of my, my talk is, and is just to talk about the kind of, well, uh, important co component of physics, and, but also of, of art, and, and I call it physics of art. And the point is that in physics, you also have not only this formula and, and so on, but you have this material, uh, this corporeal um, 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 component, which is not just um, can be perceived emotional, but it, it also has a kind of intellectual component, but it's really touching. It's about touching in physics, but also in art. So and this is, is a bit about. So um, maybe we switch now, um, Miriam, to um, 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 slide. Well, um, well, we will talk. Well, the end, of, of course, um, we will speak about, um, we will end up with Ice Cube, but um, as you will see, Ice Cube spelled in a, in, in a different way. It's not the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory in, in Antarctica. So I think you see um, the slides now. And, um, and um, yeah, as you see, the spelling is AIS cubic. This means astro particle immersive um, synthesizer cubic. So this means, well, we have. Um, this spatial uh, component, as well as we have here in the background with, um, um, with um, the heavens cover cell. And the idea is um, to, in, in my talk, just to say a few words about heavens cover cell. And it's also happy to have Volker here to, to tell you a bit about this and a bit about the genealogy, heavens cover cell plus cosmic rays, um, which end up finally in, 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 in our eyes cube. Um, so next slide, please. So the Heavens Carousel um, goes back um, to um, a collaboration with Hubble Space Telescope. It premiered in 2014 um, in uh, Rome in occasion of the Hubble Space 4 um, um, uh, um, telescope um, conference. And the, the idea was for um, the project to find a, a kind of a counterpart, artistic counterpart of the um, um, acceleration of the universe. And so it was somehow clear to work the sound and to build up the sound actually. And that what you saw before in the background rotating are loudspeakers um, playing not only colors, but also so uh, sounds which will mix up um, in space. Next slide, please. So, and 
yeah, the previous project, which goes to the pro collaboration with Harvard Space Telescope goes back to from the distant past. It was uh, laser projections um, in Venice, on as you see here in, in, in New York at American uh, Museum of Natural um, History. And um, the thing was animated. And what you see here is kind of the heartbeat of the universe um, um, showing most the oldest colors in the universe from very, very distant, faint um, object, the spectra and the spectra are very animated. So it was a kind of pulse um, really passing over um, um, the, the surface. And um, next slide. So when we had presentations, well, and with the, the Heavens Carousel was the second collaboration um, with Hubble Space Telescope. We had a premiere in Rome. Then we had a presentation in Baltimore um, at the American Visionary Art Museum in occasion of the 25th anniversary of Hubble Space Telescope. And um, then um, we had a presentation in Karlsruhe um, at the Globale um, for seven um, weeks. Um, and next slide, please. Uh, seven weeks in the inner city of um, Karlsruhe. And um, yeah, and uh, last year um, we planned in, in spring to bring uh, the Heavens Carousel over to the World Science Festival in Brisbane and later on to New York. And as everybody of you know, things went last year a bit different and as still are a bit different um, in, in our days. But um, due to the intuition um, of the, um, the, my home county, uh, Ortenaukreis Offenburg, so they had the brilliant idea to feature the Happens course in the um, Here you see a presentation um, um, in, in Offenburg on the, um, the place of the Friends of the Constitution, in which was incredible atmosphere. And people were so happy to, on as you see, in this place to enjoy together art, but on distance, and it was a unique atmosphere. So, and now we are here um, and in uh, St. Gertrud. Um, it's the first, um, um, uh, it's the second collaboration with the research cluster here, SFB 956 in uh, Cologne. Um, this was, um, we see now here yeah, a picture of the first collaboration um, where I collaborated with, um, with, with Volker. And um, we did the live scan at the a radio telescope Effelsberg of the Milky Way um, for, we scanned for H1 for the 21 centimeter radiations and slide shifts. And we transferred this in a circular um, sound installation and which was quite mesmerizing and it was a great um, atmosphere. Um, um, and we mounted, as you probably can see it in the side we have, there's a lineup. We mounted um, a, a laser in the beam of the uh, radio telescope that you could also see where we were listening to as a point, uh, as, as a beam in, in, into the sky. And um, yeah, and now we are here in, um, in uh, Cologne for St. Gertrude. And what we um, see here is, um, is cold harmony. So, and I welcome Volker. Um, so you need to switch the microphones. Um, Volker Ossenkopf Okada, who is, works here at, um, at the university in Cologne. And yeah, uh, tell us a bit about um, our second uh, collaboration. Yeah, so I can start with what we want to know in our collaborative research center. Actually, it's a simple question, how do stars form? Uh, we know in principle how it works. We have amounts of gas and dust between the stars. And of course, under their own gravity, they collapse. And a famous example here is the Orion Nebula. The, you see on the left-hand side, the constellation of Orion and the uh, marking of the nebula. And when we further zoom in and further zoom in, what Hubble Space has done is really detect there the forming stars in terms of those protoplanetary disks. What also happens if you have this uh, material collapsing under its own gravity by getting denser you form molecules and uh, 
those molecules we can detect because they have their special uh, signatures. Here you see two examples. You see the carbon monoxide on the top, which has a harmonic spectrum. So we can exactly predict where it radiates. On the bottom, you have water, and due to this angular structure, the spectrum looks quite ugly. And we can also hear it sounds, well, interesting. It sounds interesting. Uh, and <laughs> This is of course something that we want to experience with our ears here, but what we usually just look at. And if we look at the full picture here, we see at some point really huge forest of lines that uh, can be assigned to all the different molecules. And what we have done in the last years is really go line by line and try to observe this Orion Nebula and see how it looks. And then we really get a huge amount of information because in every line, this region looks different. Uh, so you see here examples uh, where I have color coded always three different transitions per picture so that we have RGB information. So we have a huge amount of information here describing this region and it's really visually kind of impossible to understand it. And that's why by knowing harmonic structures of some of the molecules, we think that uh, an acoustic translation is really a completely new way that promises some insights. And yeah, I'm very curious to see what I will learn in the next two weeks. Yeah, thanks so much, Volker. And well, we still need to learn something together because Volker just, you just heard it uh, for the first time um, this afternoon. So, and uh, you, I think you still need to process it uh, a bit, doesn't you? It was definitely interesting to hear the velocity structure of the lines because we can velocity resolve them. So we can see and hear the motion of the gas. And that's something we know, of course, but understanding from the acoustic impression is something I, I really need to spend more time than just a few minutes. Yeah, so, but I think we will work a bit together still in the next days to, yes, to fine tune the compositions. So, so and I hope at, at the end, uh, when we have finished the talk, so if some of you want to stay, we will switch on also the sound that you get a bit um, um, a sound um, impression. So um, we switch to the next slide, which will be black. And, and for the simple reason, because I, we announced um, in, um, a, um, a performance. And the performance is quite simple. And um, Miriam look, will look to the watch. And what we will do, we just will take our two hands and we will um, just take the hands and put them in front of the eyes and up. And you need to, to take part as well. Okay. Um, that the eyes are completely dark. We will do it simply for 30, minute, uh, 30 seconds. So, and you say, give the start, Miriam. One, two, three. So it's over. Um, well, quite a long time, 30 seconds. Uh, and uh, is there anybody around um, who did see nothing? Me. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, I saw something. Me too. <laughs> so um, the, this is this is interesting. So we need to discuss it further. So because um, probably you didn't. So this is my introduction to cosmic rays. And the point is, if you would wait, there were experiments in the seventies with people completely dark adapting, and um, people completely dark adapted, they started to see um, 
little flashes and um, and they got um, detectors for particles uh, in front and in the back and in fact they could correlate the flashes with the impact of cosmic rays and there is um next slide there is um well there are quite experienced um, cosmic ray detectors people and these are astronauts and i made interview for instance with alan bean he was on the second um, moon landing mission and he described when he landed on the moon and he looked on the in, a, in the dark crater of the moon he saw a flash and at that time he could not explain and then a quite famous is also a christoph fugler sang who is a physicist who flew two times to iss and he really investigated quite much in these light flashes which are in fact cosmic ray induced so and the problem is of course i would be happy well to artistically um, investigate more and explore it. But of course, it's quite difficult um, to organize astronauts and so on. So I had to look for a different um, solution. And this is was the trigger for cosmic revelation, um, the collaboration with T, um, with the detect field cascade. Um, so it's a, you, it used to be um, a field of four football fields filled up with detectors, 250 around. And what we did, we placed 16 light sculptures, flashing light sculptures in that field, flashing up when an air shower of cosmic rays um, did hit this part um, of the field. And I just will mention uh, just a few words about cosmic rays because we have also on the YouTube scene a few general public people. Well, the thing about cosmic rays is there's light is not exposed only to electromagnetic waves like light and so on, but also to well, particles, um, at atomic nuclei, and they react with the atmosphere and the trigger, um, well, these um, molecules collapse and produce secondary particles and so on, you get a kind of cascade of particles and we can detect this and right here as we are standing here they pass um, our bodies and this was my first confrontation with um cos commit with cosmic rays and um, yeah this project did go on and um, with a remote presentation in stuttgart um and um, we mounted on the roof six seen detectors, scintillator detectors, and um, measuring live in real time cosmic rays. And you see here now a, um, a night impression. And we also calculated of um, the impact and the time direction of their um, showers. And in parallel, while the staircase um, um, were flashing, if we just detected really a strong um, um, air um, shower. And what in the end happened, we changed um, the whole um, um, building in a sculpture which was, was really visible um, um, from far. So, and yeah, and this is, these are the basic compounds we have. Heaven's color cell playing with sign towns in space, cosmic rays, and somehow these two components come together in ice cube. And yeah, we will talk also about this person standing in the middle. Um, this is Christian Spiering. I will say a few words in a second. And the connection, um, just also for, to, um, for the general party, what is ice cube? Well, ice cube, this is just a really, um, 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 the tip on the surface, literally, um, because um, you see the South Pole. And what really happens with the scope happens deep in the ice, two kilometers down um, in the ice. This is a scheme. You have more, about uh, more than 80 strings. Um, and in two kilometers depth, you have all these light detectors, um, what you see at this, this bubble change. And what they do, well, they detect light. And this is interesting because you only normally would not expect light in a depth of two kilometers of ice because it's completely dark. But this is a very special phenomenon of um, astroparticles interacting and triggering um, um, light fronts traveling um, through um, the ice. And uh, yeah, and um, I assisted in 2010, the Cosmic Ray Conference at DAISY in, in Soiton. And this was right at time, um, well, when um, uh, IceCube um, Neutrino Observatory was um, launched. What we see here is a transit of um, such a um, um, event, so, so of su such a um, light uh, front 
um, 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 passing through the eyes. And this triggered my interest, not only as a visual artist, but for me, it was immediately clear, clear um, you might change medium and, and you need to do something um, with sound. And um, yeah, I talked the end um, with this, um, 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 yeah, this guy, um, most of you know from the community. Um, this is Christian Spiering from Daisy Zeuthen, former spokesperson um, of, um, of, of Ice Cube, and who built up in, in, in the year 2000s um, ice, the, the Ice Cube Laboratory uh, in Antarctica. And he was immediately, um, yeah, uh, triggered by the project. Um, just, well, to mind to, to Build a kind of yeah um, audio um, a light lab. How does next slide please? So um, yeah, and the important thing is um, to to um, to make such a project is also to find that of course collaborators. And so and this was also the link um, to to Aachen and. Um, yeah, and this was about 2016. So the first idea was in 2011. Um, then I was, and, and then you need to start with funding and, and so on. And um, yeah, next slide, slide, please. So, and in the end, you, when you got the funding, it's the same as in science, well, you build the thing. And um, what was also quite, what's quite typical, well, for, for, um, for the sciences to be very collaborative um, is um, not so familiar in the arts, but our project, this was the cool thing, it was highly collaborative because, well, this student, we built with a student group, um, um, while well, this uh, um, sound um, and light la laboratory, and you see here the test set up in, Aachen, so, um, and it was really fabulous. And, and I'm quite happy to speak in a second as well to um, our collaborating um, um, the students. So next slide, please. So, and we made it finally for the premiere in, in Berlin, which took place in September, 2018. Um, what you see is here, this cluster of 444, um, um, speakers. So, and what we show there is a a section um, of um, this um, um, speak um, of, of of Ice Cube. We map one to one, while well, the intensity measured of the detectors, while well, to um, um, the speakers. Yeah, and this is what we map. This is the so-called DOM. These are the light. Um, modules and this light intensity of the is mapped to the speakers. They play first of all sine tones, and the intensity um, um, defines the pitch. So if the high intensities result in higher pitches, um, and the, the lower intensity, uh, the, the lower intensity in and lower pitches. This is also decoded in the color. So green is uh, spec in the middle of the spectrum. So it's a mid. Um, tone, mid in energetic intensity, red is deep frequencies, low intensity, and blue. So and this is quite interesting if you have then flashing up all these lights, because you also get in the very same time, as you also hear in Heaven's Cover so an idea of the acoustic activity um, in uh, space. So when we had to build our own um, electronics and people uh, like um, uh, Marit, they assembled this electronic. Everything was cast, um, custom made, the same as also as you do for your um, detectors in, in a much more elaborated um, way. Yeah, and this is a so kind of working situations. So um, um, right before um, the, the premiere in, in uh, Berlin. And um, so now we, you need your imagination um, because we switched to computers and the videos are not running. We just show um, a still image. So what you see here um, is really a high um, energetic neutrino passing through. And the thing is what we used as a kind of sound function were not, this is quite interesting because the, the guy we made an we will talk in a second. We had also made an interview and also the police and our fire 
workers were passing by. So, um, um, yeah, anyway. And um, the interesting was because I modulated, uh, I will show you later on the website so you can watch the videos on, on, um, online, is that we had this, we, we translated this passing um, light front with noise and not sign tones. And um, um, some of the people were a bit, in the first uh, step, disappointed. And um, for instance, this guy you see on front of the computers um, for the final, yeah, um, for, for the, you see him bug fixing because we didn't have connection in Berlin. And you see this guy also here um, uh, during his stay at uh, South Pole. And this is um, Martin Rongen. So um, can I please welcome now um, Martin? Is he around? Yes, uh, Martin, we, we give us a second to be switch off our presentation so that we can see, see your full screen. No, it's fine. We see him on the second okay. window. Oh, yes. Okay, that's good. So now, now Mar so, hello, welcome, Martin. Um, so um, it, when you saw, he listened the first time, um, you expected a kind of celestial organ. Um, so, and, but finally it ended up to be noise. So what was what your first impression? I mean, the initial sound was a bit wonky, but I think it sort of evolved and diversified quite a bit also throughout the later sort of exhibitions in, in, in Munich and then back in Aachen as well. Yeah. And what is your, was, as a, a scientist, what is your, your general impression? What, what, what was it? I mean, we do have a pretty good feeling sort of about the impressive scale of our experiment, but really standing in the exhibition for the first time, and in particular in Berlin, where you sort of had this bluish tinted light stream through the ceiling, kind of looking like you're looking through the eyes or you're looking at the trunk of light and really walking through the exhibition, that was, that was quite an uplifting feeling. That was something very special. So thanks so much, Martin. Uh, we will discuss also with, with uh, the other um, uh, Ice Cube team members. And um, yeah, and um, we will continue with, maybe we'll, for the next slide, we keep it um, just the slides. It's, I think it's much more easier. So, and um, yeah, and next slide, please. Are we still connected? Yeah, you are, but you are not saying anything. Yeah, because we are waiting that our slides, as our slides will continue. So um, I think we will, we will really, so. Um, now your screen so share will, has disappeared. So we will, we will relaunch um, the, the, the So no, let, let, let's 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 um, make it a, a, a bit more spontaneous. Okay. So you've been also in the team, um, yeah. um, 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 Marit, and um, you. Um, we didn't see yet the slides from Munich, and we didn't see yet yet the slides from um, um, uh, from, from from Aachen. But you saw all the three different um, presentations. Um, so. Um, what was your experience comparing all the three um, presentations? So, well, each of the three venues uh, we were allowed to show Ice Cube so far had their very own special and individual characteristics. So the first place was a classicist church in Berlin and that had partly been destroyed during World War II and not fully reconstructed. So it had a very raw and majestic atmosphere inside. Um, in addition to that, the Daisy Zeugen group created a wonderful um, educational program for uh, school classes from Berlin, who were then invited to see the installation. The second stop was Munich. And then um, 
we 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 build up ice cube in the uh, reactor hall there it was planned as a research reactor in the very center of munich before but never came to use it such and nowadays it's used by the music academy as concert hall and um, for performances uh, we could only show ice cube there for one weekend and people came and attended ice cube as a show so they sat in the audience and looked at it and the participation was not as much given as in berlin the last stop then was um, the ludwig forum in aachen which is a modern art museum so it was the only real museum among all venues and um, the visitors had to buy tickets we gave guided tours um, yeah so it was more the character of an arts installation there. Yeah, can, can you give a, a special feedback of, of some of a visitor? Um, well, one person in Aachen asked me if we were to uh, plan to uh, show the installation at Burning Man Festival or at similar festivals. Well, that's quite fun because um, it would actually be taken out of the scientific context in such a place, I would think. Okay, well, thanks so much, um, so, and um, well, we are happy that we have so much um, team members also around because now our presentation, obviously the slides did crash, but we can just continue because as you mentioned uh, that we gave the educational tours and um, you students gave tours, um, well, to um, student groups and later on in, in, a, in a different way also to a general art public. So um, may um, I ask um, um, Mark to join, who made some um, of the um, student tours in, um, in, uh, in Berlin. Hi. Hi, Mark, how are you doing? So um, yeah, you gave the cosmic flashing um, tours for students um, in, in Berlin. Yes, exactly. So um, the um, audience for this um, high school um, student guided tours um, was basically um, physics courses. And am I still yes. online? Yeah, we're still online. So okay. Right now we're, uh, so ah, just, just yeah, your, skip your the video is frozen. Okay, yeah. Um, and it was it was it was pretty cool. So what we did was we um, tried to. I mean, um, I'm also from the astrophysics background. So um, for us, it was kind of um, the um, goal to connect um, this um, um, these two topics, art and science. And um, so we started these guided tours always with a. Um, a rather general introduction um, on the physics. So we had the kind of mini lecture about um, neutrinos, um, about ice cube, the the experiment, and um, also a little outlook on um, multi messenger astronomy. And the, um, then um, we gave the students kind of um, a little time to digest all this input. And there were some, um, yeah, two, two extra rooms in this church um, from the um, standard um, exposition where um, there was some additional information material. And um, so they had a little time to, um, yeah, digest the, the, the input we gave to them. And um, there were also some discussions going on with us. and. Um, then finally, because before we always um, had just a um, um, uh, silent um, white um, background light turned on in, on the um, art installation, and then um, we we've let them in the installation for the first time, and we turned it on, and um, they could really sit inside. Um, of it and look up to the to the um, neutrino showers, which was uh, pretty cool. I think it was a different um, experience also for for the students, and, and I'm I'm very happy that we see the video in the background. Then you see because the high energetic 
um, that you know um, events quite cool and you see people standing in so um, so at least in, on your part the video is working very well and um, right. so and I think it was the difference um, between well telling the people the scientific part and then also for the students um, really being exposed in in ice cube what was what was the general reaction so yeah there was there was quite of course on the on the scientific um, Part, there was um, a lot of interest and also fascination um, and um, then uh, also um, for for the um, so I, I experienced the the, the feedback um, also um, very very um, interesting in terms of um, so there, I, I remember, for example, one discussion where um, this um, physics um, presentation also stimulated um, a discussion about the relevance of basic research and, um, yeah, which, which um, kind of then connected also to, to the relevance of art. And um, that was a really, really interesting um, discussion which emerged and um, I think also um, yeah for 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 many of the students this was a um, a great experience to to just uh, get in touch with the topic you wouldn't get in touch um, otherwise so thanks so much so um, let's continue the, the interactive session um, with the next team member um, um, I think this was Lasse who gave a different kind of um, um, of tour. Yes, so we had these, uh, we called them tandem tours, which were partially comprised of uh, people who studied arts and were doing guided tours of arts in the Ludwig Forum here in Aachen. And then another part was scienti uh, of scientific background. So um, there was very much uh, uh, the, the people that were coming and uh, attending these uh, tandem uh, guided tours were of very different backgrounds. So we had uh, students of physics, we had people that had never really uh, come into the in contact um, with uh, physics or even with ice cube. And um, that was very rewarding. Yeah. And um... What was your um, yeah your, your personal um, impression and, and also so what were, were the questions from from the art people to the to the physicists? Um, they were very much interested in 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 what it is we are doing. Mm -hmm. So um, there were a lot of questions about. For, there was this uh, in the Ludwig form you saw before on the slides. There was this dom, and um, they were not really speaking dom, but they were talking. We were talking around the dom, standing around, and they were asking, "So, what does this thing do, and how does that uh, correlate with what I am feeling um, when I look inside the exhibition, for example?" So, um, and the, the, the nice thing was with the dom was um, that um, we had a huge discussion um, with. Um, so um, we just had to switch to the, the webcam. And um, um, because it was really, because the Ludwig Forum is an art museum and uh, a dome, so your light detectors, um, which we saw before in the slide is a scientific instrument. And we had huge discussions with the museum to present the dome, this scientific object in a, in a museum where normally only, um, um, uh, yeah, art objects are supposed to be um, presented. So this is one uh, yes, a, a nice near side effect. Um, so you always learn um, um, with, um, yeah, in this art and science collaboration as we currently also do. And um, yeah, um, maybe thank you so much, um, Lasse, for, for joining. Can we, can I talk now to Jan? Um, because he also had a special experience with the um, with the Ludwig Forum. Of course, you can. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Jan. How are you doing? So, so fine, the, the, 
so the, 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 night, the interesting thing um, uh, what you told me is, well, you studied in Aachen, and, um, but you said you never made before um, it to this, well, important museum of modern art, the Ludwig Forum. So, um, so in a way, so um, Ice Cube was your first confrontation, well, with, um, well, with this modern art. So how was your experience? Yeah, exactly. So I'm not really the arts person. So uh, the Ludwig Forum uh, was new for me. Uh, so, uh, but nevertheless, it was a very exciting experience to see uh, Ice Cube itself um, in the um, Ludwig Forum because um, yeah, before uh, in Munich and Berlin, it was only presented in a more yeah, uh, isolated way. And uh, when it was then presented uh, in this uh, arts context, uh, it, it helped me to, to um, yeah, get a different uh, view on Ice Cube itself. So before, uh, for me, it was a little bit like a big fancy um, event display for uh, real Ice Cube data. Um, but seeing all the, the arts context, um, yeah, made me, made me see it as an, yeah, a piece of art uh, itself. Yeah, it, it, indeed. So the one thing was the noise thing. So, um, so um, it's also a bit about, well, uh, um, playing with expectations. So, and, um, and normally you all had in mind, well, um, neutrino events, but what came out, what was really cool, um, as sound material was the raw detected data. So this is what no, you normally want to avoid, avoid is, but this raw data where you have some, some when um, a, a muon coming down. So, um, so um, yeah, and I think we also enjoy together this, this, this noise thing and all these different facets of noise. So, um, yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks so much um, 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 for, 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 for your impressions, for your yeah, art confront, from confrontation. So I mean, we hope somewhere in the near future that we can um, pre present this um, 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 a, again. So at least we have our webcam running now again in, in a bit different quality, but it's, uh, it's, it's running. And um, yeah, and there's another per person um, in, in the round and that's, that's um, Simon Sierke. Are you around? Yeah, hi. So, hi, um, welcome um, um, Simon. And yeah, you came to the team in, well, um, for the presentation in Aachen, so for the third, so you, you didn't know the steps before, you probably heard at the Institute a bit, but you are normally, your research is focused on, on melting um, um, probes, so you have so little bit aside, you see what happens with, with ice cube, so, and so, so what triggered you, your, your interest um, um, in, in, in ice cube? Uh, I did work with ice cube, so the real ice cube detector before, um, but you came to the Institute in Aachen and asked me to do some improvements for the installation to get everything faster. So yeah. I went, took the hardware and dig into what was done before and how I can improve it. And yeah, because I only knew the status from all the videos, I don't have a personal uh, direct comparison how this did improve, but um, to see the ice cube detect or the ice cube installation then in the museum and running for the first time was, uh, yeah, great experience for me and made me really happy that my improvements worked so well and that it now runs so fast and smooth that it also gave you as an artist uh, new opportunities to make your compositions with the ice cube art installation yeah absolutely and and i'm so grateful for for, for, the, for the work you've done um you can say literally you're the terminator and the final bug fixer and 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 just in technical terms before we could run 
probably um, five changes um, per sphere in a second. And so now, theoretically, we can run 100 um, changes per second for each of the 444 speakers. And this really opened um, 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 yeah, a, a new dimension. And I think, Simon, it was also cool, um, well, not to have you there um, as a back fixer, but also we really worked in place so the nice thing, Monday is always closed in the museum. And so this is where our days uh, to work are um, um, in place. And so what, how was this um, collaboration for you then? Because there's an artist coming with his with software and, um, and finally trying new patterns. So what was your impression finally also of your working result being exposed in person in, in uh, in our school. Um, yeah, working with you as an artist is also was a little bit challenging for me because <laughs> um, yeah, normally I do software for physics and they need to run and they only need to run um, yeah, for their own task and you need software which you can control and to give your input into the software so you can do your work with the installation and but also inspired me to do some own i taught develop some own ideas how what can be done with this art installation so um yeah working out new sounds or new test patterns for yeah, example yeah yeah yeah, definitely. So, and it was really fun to working with you because in place, because you really feel, uh, yeah, well, you're fun on, and you, and you, how curious you are to to, to explore um, um, a, a a a new um, a new thing. So, uh, thanks so much, um, Simon, um, for, for 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 joining. So, um, and yes, now I'm uh, coming back at the very end. Well, to some 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 conceptual. Um, so, so. Um, so, 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 hmm? Hmm? Yeah, we, we did it. Yeah, so, so um, my director um, is just um, in the week. So, um, coming to the, the final um, conclusion, so the, the title is um, of, the, of, of, of the presentation is When Neutrinos Make You Cry. And this was also a reaction of the visitor um, in, in, in Berlin. Um, and this visitor, this, this, this woman stopped at the door and she almost did cry and she said, um, I can't enter. And it's um, not um, because she didn't like it, but, but she was really so deeply um, touched. And so there's something in there and it, it, it really touches me. Now we come really back to this, this, this physics. And I simply can't enter. So, and and in a way, it was also a compliment for me for an artist. So, because you really see there is really a deep effect um, on the people. We hope you will have it here in the church with uh, with with with, with, with um, cold harmonies. And and I might end uh, with um, a um, with um, so just a second, huh? Show a video. Oh, Christopher can show a video. Um, I, I can't, can't see. Um, so we will, I will say a, a last few words and then we, we, we check for a video which, which um, Christopher uh, will share with, uh, with an, an impression. So, and um, well, this impression from really from, 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 from the general public feedback being really touched. And also um, a famous art historian, um, Horst Bredikov, co-founder of the Humboldt Forum in, in Berlin. Um, he also said a really important sentence on Ice Cube. And he says, um, and this is what Christopher also said about will this idea having Ice Cube as a score. He says, Ice Cube is not a reproduction. Ice Cube is a response. And I think this is a good final sentence. And, and well, I thanks, uh, thank you, Christopher, when you can um, uh, share the video for, for, for the ad. Uh, uh, Tim, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. 
so I have Heaven's Carousel, I have Cosmic Revelation, and I have five videos from all the sites. Which one do you want me to show? Um, maybe you can can show um, the 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 fast track with. Do -do 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 I think I know which one you mean. Let me let me try if I can <laughs> launch it. Uh, that should be this one from the Ludwig Forum, correct? Uh, no, it's from 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 Berlin, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just a moment. Uh, now I have problems. I don't have enough screens. <laughs> So, uh, Christopher, uh, while, while you are looking, do you hear me? Can I say a word? Of course, yes, please. Yes. So we can also switch over uh, to the Q&A. While you are looking for the right, what, what you are looking for, the, while you are looking for the right uh, film, I just want to say that I, when this exhibition uh, has been in, in, in Berlin, I have been about 10 or 15 times in the exhibition and, and looking to people, and mostly in the evening, uh, just a quarter before it was closed and people were asking, please don't close, give us another 10 minutes, it's so beautiful. And they are laying uh, uh, and being embedded in that uh, artwork and, uh, and dreaming and being amazed and marveling. And, and the nicest thing was this, uh, I mean, you know it, of course, Miriam and Tim, you remember her, this uh, 70 year old, no, yeah. older, but 77 women um, yes. who have been Ms. seven Vigos. times in the exhibition. And she said, before I like neutrinos because they are so small. Now I like them because they are so beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's a nice um, um, final sentence and, and uh, yeah. And thanks also, Christian. So what I didn't mention because we lost the slides is we did also a fantastic symposium. This was another aspect um, of our Ice Cube premiere in, in Berlin in two years, in, in two days symposium, discussing really this interconnectedness of, 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 of art and science, and especially with the focus on physics. So you have a lot of art and science, quite general things, but this was really special focus in physics and art. And it's where really you also took part two very intense days. So now we have the video um, ready. Yeah, can people see this, my screen? Yes, absolutely. Okay, let's start. This is the one. Sound? Yes, we, we had the sound. This is now Munich. Yes. Yeah. So thank you, Christopher, for, for sharing this. I think this is a good good example to the to, to, to two slides. Okay. Oh yeah, that's Berlin. That's also Berlin. That's the picture that you have shown. Yeah. And okay. good. Now how do I stop? So it? um yeah, just let me tell it. Uh, a few few few, ver few few words about this. Well, this first was this noisy thing, but the the, the first two um, videos, um, which did sound the thing about the score, the basic um, the basic basis is the same data set, but which did sound completely um, com completely different. So, and this is a bit um, this very idea to also play with the physicality, which, which is in a way um, inherent in, in, this, uh, in this data. So I think um, we might switch to some questions and answers um, if there are some, some people around having some questions, so.
Yeah, I think people can po post questions in the chat or they can just speak up. Questions from, from, from your side? We are now to the, <laughs> the Q&As. <laughs> But well, we got already a lot of answers from the students. So I'm very grateful and I'm grateful to you so to having joined. So, um, so let, let, I think we have to break the ice. Yes. Uh, Jim, let yes. me ask a question. Um, yeah. What are now, if we think that COVID is, might be over sometime, what would be the future plan of this project? Um, for for an ice cube, um, the future plans. Well, yeah, we, there were plans, um, as we discussed with Jim, to bring it over um, well, the pond to the US. So um, this is um, a thing we need to bring again to, to discussion. And we had also plans to show it um, with the Pascal coil in Marseille. We had some one attempt to bring it to a museum there. And we switched the plans and so, and also um, with Teresa, we want to bring the thing also to, um, um, to Geneva. Um, and um, we have a good, a really cool location, but um, we need still some, some, some funding for it. So this in, in concrete terms are well, more kind of the sketch-like um, um, plans, but also, well, um, as you saw, Ice Cube is really a kind of work in progress. We will see it also with Heaven's Cover Style because um, such works which have such a strong spatial component, you simply can't simulate. You really need the final composition um, in, in that space. And so um, Ice Cube did a very big jump and Christian can, can say because he saw it from the very first sounds and, and in, in Berlin and it changed so much already in these three weeks of presentation in Berlin. And um, well, and then we had also made a big jump also in, um, in, in Aachen. And um, um, because, well, we had this upgrade thanks to, 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 to Simon and, um, um, yeah, this was a completely new possibilities to make, um, which have, we haven't explored um, so far. So the next thing, first of all, is um, to, um, yeah, to plan the next presentation and to continue in a new space um, um, uh, to work with the with ISQ. So we have here some uh, questions in the chat. So you have some 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 questions, um, yes. Yeah, I um, think. Uh, let me see. The first question was from Jim. Yes. And he asked, you had to reduce the number of elements by a factor of ten. Yes. How did you handle this? Well, um, just not to, to, to have scaling um, um, errors, we simply put a, a part of ice cube. Um, so what we did, um, or, well, first of all, Martin did a um, major um, data analysis. He looked where's the mo the, where, where we have the most activity in the detector of ice cube of the over, over 5,000 DOMs. Um, and he looked to that part and, and we mapped down one-to-one um, -one from a DOM, from a detector to a loudspeaker as not to have some, some interpolation and things like that. So, and, and of course, it's very clear in 444 channel sound installation. This is something quite rather new. Um, even here, the Heavens Cover Cell, 36 speakers rotating in the R. This is something quite new. So, but in the end, well, you have limited budget. And I think um, it was completely sufficient well, to have only uh, 44 for um, speakers. And as you mentioned, um, Christopher, to have really this score-like and this puristic approach, we did this one-to-one -one, um, 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 mapping. So I, I think the next question from Hannah is very relevant. 
Yes. Uh, he, she asked, why did you choose the sounds we just heard for the neutrino events? I think this is something where we have not touched so much on what do we, how do you actually encode the information in? What so the, the point is that the, the noise is not just white noise, it's filtered noise. Yes, and so you also have a basic tone of the noise. And so you have also this energetic representation by the bass pitch. And it was also, noise is interesting to work with and we will also explore it for the first time for the Heavens Cover Cell. Here, we haven't used it before for Heavens Cover Cell because noise you can, can um, because in our cube you're in the middle of a space and the, the problem is um, to locate by audition um, the pathways. And if you do it with sign tones, um, it's quite tricky for our audition to, to, to follow the pathways. And these noise tracks are really quite articulated. So there's a technical reason why to use um, a noise, but also um, an artistic um, dimension. And this is the filters because you can have a quite harsh, almost white noise, and but you can also do it more like, like more like a wind, like an ocean. And this is our the compositorial parts you can play with. Hannah, you're happy with that? Yeah, she she can post another question if there's another one. Um, I I think I have a I I think I have a noise video also. I could show later, but le let me first come to the next question from mm -hmm. Lindsay. Um, do you have a favorite installation piece? I love seeing the videos. The combined audiovisual produces a very beautiful and haunting effect. I can't um, say that there um, is, 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 is a favorite um, because, yeah, well, there's no, no, no real favorite piece in, in a noise cube. So, or do you have a favorite piece? Yeah, it, first of all, what's important is, is the exhibition side. And, um, and it's, it's also clear that you also have to um, really adapt the ice cube to the ex exhibition side. You simply couldn't take the same playlist and the same parameters for, for, for the other location because they did simply interact with space. Space becomes a synthesizer. They interact with, with the room around. Um, as we have here, if you have an incredible echo here in space. Um, so, and I can say, well, short, there's no fa favorite um, because there's so uh, such a rich spectrum. I, of course, I like the rich, the Nutinus track, but I like also the basic detector noise. Um, Yes, um, of course I like the pieces um, which show a lot of um, the temp, um, dynamics in, in the change of the metrum, which start very slow and speed up um, because they show a huge spectrum. But yeah, I could lay hours in, in an ice cube in, 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 in Aachen and uh, in Berlin I didn't have the time to because uh, I just wanted to get my my compositions um, 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 ready. Um, yeah, no favorite. I have three or four favorites, but I don't remember the numbers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's an, another question from Keith. Uh, did anyone from the early days of Ice Cube, when drilling the holes? capture the sound of dropping a small piece of ice down an unfrozen hole before the doms were deployed. That's very good that you did it before. <laughs> As I recall, it was an amazing sound that could be incorporated in this sort of multimedia presentation. Um, yeah, I think that would be a good question if anybody has recorded this and well, and it was, would be also a new job for Simon because we, we need to implement it in, in, in the <laughs> firmware. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a, a very interesting thing. So, so, one, so instead of noise, one could also incorporate some kind of live sounds. Oh, your camera has just been lost. 
Miriam, our camera has no, been lost. Like my video. So, so instead yeah. of noise, one could uh, also okay. choose different types of encodings, like various sound templates that could be modified by this. This is also an option that you could do, is it? Yeah, um, well, we I mentioned two um, um, options where we have sine waves, we have the filtered noise, and we also have um, the triangular waves, uh, which we also can filter and so play um, uh, with, with, with these, 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 these wave functions. And, um, and here in Cologne, we did do a very first experiment because we have modified two of the loudspeakers where we will uh, stream also real sound to. Um, this will be a new experiment and probably this can, uh, well, um, also lead to new th stuff um, um, for, for, for Ice Cube. Good. And then Mark has posted the website. Um, yes. The question is, uh, are there, uh, or my question would be, are there videos also on the website that people can there's look a, there, There's some videos on the website, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a very nice um, summary video, I think, from, 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 uh, from Munich, I think is on the, on, the, on the front page. And we um, have on the sub pages also other videos. Um, yes, uh, slideshows. And, um, and my recommendation is please use um, headphones um, for the sounds. We have also sound samples um, from, from major um, patterns on the side, um, on, on, on the page. Okay, and then uh, Hannah was happy with the, uh, your answer to your question. That's the last oh, post. That's the moment. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Uh, okay, I'm not sure if there's if she we should close the session or if there are any more questions. Somebody who wants to say something. Well, what I I will say so people who who might are around, um, um, well, we will officially open doors. So the point is we are, everybody knows we have special times, a special situation um, and here um, in Germany and also in, as well as in other countries. And um, um, we show here um, um, the cold harmonies as kind of open, um, church so um we have limited access but we have access as a open church and everybody who is around um is welcome uh, to join we are running from saturday to, until to um 11 um, um april and you can also of course look online my main page is imechination.net to look for further um information yeah so Thanks to you all. Thanks to you, Christopher. So, and um, in, in this time, I also have to say thanks to Elisa. Um, we didn't show the slides from 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 Munich. So, as always, for such projects um, as, and as the one here, the collaborative aspect is always important. Well, to make these um, um, things happen, it was a long way. It looks. So super light, if you see their ice cube, but it was a long way. It took us from the very first idea, six, seven years to, to make it um, um, reality. Also, especially thanks to engagement also from, from Christian Spiering and, and Desi. And um, so thank you also for all the team members who joined today. Thank you to you, Volker, for having joined um, um, the session. And um, well, let's say simply let's work on to make also people cry, um, um, let, to let neutrinos cry people in the future time and um, to collaborate also in the way we did uh, in future times. Thanks so much. Okay. Um, I think there are, is, actually there are now two more comments in the chat. Maybe I should report them. The first one yes. maybe yeah. can quickly answer because I find it interesting. Are the sounds recorded binaurally? Yes, yes. Um, I think the, the, I, I have in-ear microphones um, for, this, for the recordings on the website. I recorded them in Berlin. The Berlin sounds are recorded with in-ear microphones. So you get a pretty good impression of that, what happens in that space. 
Okay, and then we got a YouTube link where we probably have a dropped eye sound. I have not had time now to look at it, but I have a link to that and we can look at that. Cool. So th this is a good basis uh, to continue and uh, for yeah. the next uh, um, presentations. So, okay. okay. So then maybe, would, yeah. maybe we can, can keep also switched on. I will try to, to bring a bit sound so um, we can put the video a bit higher. So if you're interested to get a kind of preview um, um, of um, cold harmonies. And um, yeah. Thanks so much. Cosmic greetings, as you know, um, or as always, cosmic greetings. And uh, yeah, um, to, to meet in, yeah, new, um, hopefully um, soon in person again, and to experience physically the physics of art. Thank you so much. Okay, then I think we, uh, we thank you for this wonderful presentation and how you collected all the people for the interview. That's uh, <laughs> harvesting every, everyone. That was very good to see. So, so yeah, yeah, but I think it's, 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 it's fantastic. You really saw a bit. So when we did the, 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 the check yesterday, so um, you really saw in the eyes of all the participants it, in, in a way, recapitulating well this this experience um, and the excitement um, um, of Ice Cube and um, and the same when with you. So um, yeah, uh, hopefully in the very near future we can experience and share again, really physically again, um, well uh, this um, this excitement. Thanks so and, and thanks so much for for this uh, this brilliant collaboration. I, I really have to say, Christopher, you have a unique team i never had such a student team so uh, with really this working with this excitement and we had really some technically some really some up and downs we didn't mention of course as you would also not do for for the scientific experience but really um we had difficult times just simply because of the electronics to get them working in the in, in the way we intended and also conceptually it was really fruitful and it is also so enriching to feel um, uh, the excitement um, of a team so and this gives you power and uh, um, well, to continue these, these projects and to make the pre projects happen thanks so much well thank you for the nice words so i think um